Welcome to worship this morning. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning to celebrate All Saints Sunday, a Sunday where we celebrate those saints who have died in the past year and those who have been baptized in the past year, at least officially on, in the naming of them this service. And we even have one of our newly baptized right there. Look at him. He doesn't care because he can't be embarrassed as a baby yet. So this is everybody looking cool because I love babies. Uh, we welcome you online as you're with names of the baptized and those who have died, not just in this past year, but all the saints as people remember them. If you're watching at home and you didn't have time to bring a bag into the worship space, maybe take a moment right now and write down a name and just put it in front of you at wherever you're worshiping this morning so that you can remember those saints baptized and welcomed into eternity of death as we celebrate and remember this morning. Uh, if you have communion, we celebrate communion here, but we do it in our rows, so if you brought it, great. If you didn't and you still need it, we have little cups with bread and juice in them that you can have in your seat when the time comes for that part of the service. Let us begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you, we're not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called and to rejoicing. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in the lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. This day we ask for your guidance for a peaceful election, for the safety of democracy and the voice of the people to be heard without terror. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn.
first reading is from Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord, who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is a good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Fear the Lord, who saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The second reading is from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. A saint is one who has been set apart by God for God's purposes. God, out of divine love, set us apart to be children of God. Our holy hope is that we shall see God as God really is. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that what is God, what is we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak. And he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Have you ever used a word too much? You know, when you say a word over and over and over again, it becomes like a silly word. Uh, I've done that all week as I've been thinking about this gospel reading, about what I'll say to all of you, and the word blessed, blessed, has rolled around in my head and in my writing, and I've used it more, and I have seen it more than I have in probably a whole year, because, you know, once you start thinking about a word, then you notice it everywhere. So I was at Home Depot, and they have a little decoration that you can stick on your wall that just says, blessed. At Hobby Lobby, picture frame upon picture frame upon picture frame says blessed on it. A little box at our house that holds pictures also said blessed on it in my own house. I can't remember where it is. I've looked at it, I've said it, I've read it, and the more I say it or see it, the more nonsensical it becomes in my mind, right? It just sounds like I've kind of lost its meaning, or it had for a moment there, and, and when that happens, there's actually a, a phrase for it. Did you know that? When you use a word so much that it becomes nonsense, it's called semantic satiation. 
Ooh, fancy words. Which in itself, semantic satiation, the more you say that, the more silly it sounds. But don't get lost in that, okay? Stay with me. The problem with semantic satiation is that you can sometimes get lost in the nonsense or the idea of losing the meaning of the word, and you actually forget to pay attention to the word itself. Whew. But if we go back to that word blessed, it is used a lot. Some might even say too much in our world right now. On social media, hashtag blessed has been used for everything from a joke to its actual meaning and everything in between. But in the Bible, I teach our confirmation students and anytime I do a Bible study that when Jesus or others repeat a phrase or a word time and time again, it's a cue for us. It's a cue for us as readers and listeners to pay attention. And in this case, Jesus is using it at least nine times, depending on your translation of the Bible. So yeah, maybe we would be wise to pay attention to the word blessed this morning. Blessed often stirs up images of coziness, at least for me, of kind of fresh baked bread, warm fireplaces, cool breezes on a summer day. Blessed is rarely the kind of weather we have outside right now, you know, 30 mile an hour wind and 38 degrees. Blessed is abundance. Blessed is more than we expect. Blessed is a surprise visit by someone we love and miss. It's a feeling of fullness when there's leftovers to spare. Blessed for Jesus this morning is that thing too. It's the presence of God in the midst of what would otherwise be described as a non-God moment, as anything other than blessed. Blessed are the ones who are poor in spirit. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the grieving. Those are hard things to go through in this world. They're not jobs, they're things that we do. Yes, even in our grief, God's blessing can rain down. I don't know if you guys were in 2020 with me so far, but uh, there's a little bit of grief going on, right? It's a lot of grief surrounding us, actually. COVID, a strained economy, adjustments at work, a volatile voting system, an election year, School and social lives have been keeping others safer, but all the while making us sometimes lonelier and more stressed out and grieving the things that were what's, were, what's what we called normal. But all the while those things are happening with COVID, the rest of the world keeps tripping along, doesn't it? Your nemesis at work, and I know you got one, uh, they keep crawling under your skin, don't they? Your kids still argue about the silliest things, adult and ch uh, uh, minor children alike, on an otherwise quiet day. Your family members call with news that another branch of your family member or of your family tree has passed on into eternity. Blessed are those who grieve. Oof. Sometimes it's easier just to get mad, isn't it? And sometimes in our family, we do that ourselves. I don't know if your family grieves in that way, but sometimes it's easier to get mad instead of being sad. We've done that lots and lots of times. It's easy to turn our grief into anger. And so we watch that in our household, in our family, making sure that when we are sad, we're naming that sadness rather than just turning it into anger. Whether we're grieving the changing world around us or the death of a loved one, we can often just get angry about it. We can surrender ourselves with anger like a blanket around us, thinking it will protect us from the blessing in the grief. When my father-in-law died this summer, I was privileged with my wife and my extended family, my brother and sister-in-law, two close family friends, and my mother-in-law to be present with him as he died. And as a pastor, I was the only one in the room who had been with someone who had died before. And every time I had been present with someone, I was the outsider, the one who comforted, the one who prayed. But this time, I was the broken one with everyone else who was broken. We were on the inside together. And we didn't get angry. We held hands. We sang songs. Not that great, but we still sang them. We told stories. We surrounded ourselves with love and grief, and we wrapped ourselves not in anger, but in love. And I was surprised and relieved and overwhelmed by all of those feelings. We allowed ourselves as a family in the privacy of that room to be present 
in the unimaginable to watch someone take their last breath. We ugly cry. The masks we were get wearing were soaked with tears and snot. I'm sure I'm going to get a talking to when I get home about that part. But as my father-in-law took his last breath, we surrounded him with words of blessings, of the qualities we would miss, of the blessings we would no longer have the fortune of having with him. And I thought for sure in that moment, as someone on the inside, it would feel a whole lot different than when I sat on the outside. But it wasn't all that different. I cried a lot more with my family than with other families, but instead of being filled with grief that was lost in fear or anger, I found myself lost in the blessings. The blessing of a wife and a family who knew the importance of being vulnerable and safe with one another, of knowing the blessing that lay at our feet and around our shoulders in the hugs who us who bore the grief together rather than trying to bear it on our own. That's the blessing right there. That's the power of God, that God would work in our midst, that we do not and must not bear these things alone. Whether it's any number of those things on that list, whether you're in the middle of grief at the beginning or the end of it, the blessing is finding yourself side by side with those who you love and trust, those who will find room for you at the table even when we've run out of chairs. The blessing is being found after feeling lost in your own despair depression and anxiety, blessing upon blessing so that we have the confidence to face the adversity and know that it will not be the end of us or define our story. The blessings of God are often mysterious. The older I get, the more I lean into the mystery of God's presence around us. The blessings of God are mysterious and they're often found in doing and then being gracious enough to receive back what was once given. The blessing is that God remains in the middle of those things that could so easily pull us away from God. We would want to pull us away from our certainty, from our foundation of faith. These bags that sit in front of us this morning, which you can't really tell because the lights are so bright, and I'll dim them in a little bit here, uh, they're burning bright with the light of Christ this morning. They're reminders of those we have loved and that have been welcomed in baptism and those we have trusted to God's eternal care. They're the lives of modeled leadership, of open curiosity, of brokenness. They're the faces we miss and the faces we welcome. They're the joy of our souls missed in death and welcomed in baptism. The joy of being a Christian is that we bear these things together, that we would be vulnerable enough to let down our guard, that we would drop the sadness and embrace, or drop the anger, excuse me, and embrace the sadness. That we would be trusting enough to receive what we so freely give, and that we would trust the blessing of God to fall around us and tie us together as one people. The lights and the names and the faces of all the people of God are celebrated this day and every day so that we can open ourselves to the joy and, dare I say, the blessing of God all around us.
Thank you, Bob. Let us join together in confessing the faith we share with all these saints around us by speaking the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, a holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us remember all the saints before God. We praise and bless you, O Holy Trinity. You have taught your church that it is an ageless communion of saints. We thank you for gathering those who faithfully waited in hope for the redemption you promised. Prepare a place for us among those who are already with you. Help us remember them as an encouragement to saintly living, inspiring us to love in anticipation of an eternal reunion. Lead us alongside the newly baptized, that we may always strive to serve you in words and in deeds. Christ says, take up my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light, and you will find rest for your souls. We, we, remem the oh, go ahead. we remember those who have died. Julie Jasperson. Lois Undall. Martha Ryan. Nora Carey. Bessie Porter. Shirley Holland. Corey Porter. Les Krupke. Edna Herfindahl. Kitty Oakland. Elwood Hagen. Eddie Johnson. 
Jeff Poista. Cliff Engerbretson. Cliff Stahl. Milburn Nelson. Christine Yonke. Ruth Scram. Marilyn Sitzer. We give thanks for those who have been baptized and join in us the community of all the saints. Reed Patton. Graham Platton. Josie Lightsey. Nolan Sterling. Merciful God, you heal the broken in heart and bind up the wounds of the afflicted. Strengthen us in our weakness. Calm our troubled spirits and dispel our doubts and fears. In Christ rising from the dead, you conquered death and open the gates to everlasting life. Renew our trust in you, that by the power of your love, we shall one day be brought together again with all the saints in light. Grant this, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you all to share a sign of God's peace, one another with a wave, a peace sign, or a comment. Hello. Peace. That's peace. Lord be with you. Just as we gather, we remember that Jesus and his followers gathered together as one people. And as they did, they watched as Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to each of his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took a cup and passed it to all, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As this meal is shared, let your grace be poured out to all who participate with us now, even as we pray together the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the power. We invite you to join us in sharing communion, whether you're here or at home. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Let the grace of this meal wash over you. The mystery of Christ dwell within you, and the power of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Before our final song, I just want to make a couple of announcements. These roses and these two beautiful vases up here are for the families of those who have died in the last year or have been baptized in the past year. So one per family, please. If you wish to take your luminary that you made home with you, um, you may. Just remember, blow out the candle. If you can set the tea light, 
um, there's a, you can come up, remember social distancing, so please don't all come up at once, come up a couple at a time. Um, you can put the candles on the little pew over there, and there's a white bucket near Pastor Shane that the sand can go into. <laughs> all right. Um, Bob? <laughs> Receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.